If I had words grating or crude enough that really could describe the horrid hole of hell, I could squeeze out the juice of my memories to the last drop. But I don't have these words, so I'm reluctant to begin. It all began in May 1274 when Dante Alighieri fell in love with a girl on the streets of Florence. He was nine years old when first he saw her. I thought of a daughter of a god, not of a mortal man. At that time, love so mastered my soul that I was forced to carry out its will absolutely. Many times in boyhood I would seek her out. From the moment Dante caught sight of the eight-year-old Beatrice Portinari, his life was transformed. His love launched him on a journey across the universe from darkness into the light of paradise. sexuality can lead in many directions, a lot of them destructive and cruel. Dante turned his love of Beatrice into a sensitive and kindly vision. This transformation of potential evil into good was to be the great achievement of Dante's imagination. But what Dante meant by love worked on many different levels. At one level, it was courtly love, based on the songs and lyrics of the troubadours of southern France, where true masculinity expressed itself by respecting rather than dominating the female. At another level, it was full-blooded sexual love, although Dante never had any physical contact with Beatrice. And at yet another level, it was a mirror image of the love of God and the Queen of Heaven, the Virgin Mary, at a time when her cult was becoming more youthful and humane. But above all, the love of Dante for Beatrice, she who makes beautiful, she who makes blessed, became a focus or distillation of his entire vision of existence. A perfect example of divine love in an ordinary Florentine woman. The little boy who loved Beatrice Portinari gazed up at a supremely medieval work of art. A single picture of life, the universe and everything. The origin of the universe. The creation of the first man, Adam, and the first woman, Eve. The discovery of good and evil. Adam trying to put the blame on Eve for tempting him. The first human beings expelled from paradise. Dante saw the whole story of the world in glittering mosaic. The souls of the damned being eaten by Satan, already in the gruesome setting which Dante would later populate with the nastiest of his contemporaries. quintessentially medieval. All experience unified in one picture. Dante was to take this picture and turn it into a single grand narrative. Dante studied politics and taught himself to write poetry. The love of his life became mixed with dreams and visions until it was his main preoccupation. A marriage was arranged for him in his late teens and they had three children, but he never once mentioned his wife Gemma in his poetry. Poetry was for Beatrice, the glorious lady of his mind. 
They only met in reality five times. But the idea of divine love and his love for Beatrice were to become inseparable. After she departed this life, the city was left as though widowed, despoiled of all life. Beatrice has gone to heaven on high, among the angels in the realm of peace. In 1290, when Dante was 25 and she was only 24, Beatrice Portinari died. But Dante wasn't the kind of romantic poet to dwell on her death or become morbid about it. The miracle that was Beatrice, he wrote, and the sign of truth which she had become, had moved on to their proper place in the universe. Dante searched for a new voice in which to express his love, so that one day he'd be able to praise her as he should. The end of that search, which lasted half a lifetime, was to be called the Divine Comedy. If ever it happens that this sacred poem, to which both heaven and earth have set their hand, wins over those cruel hearts that exile me from my sweet fold where I grew up as a lamb, I shall return a poet and at my own baptismal font assume the laurel wreath. Just as a flash of lightning strikes the visual spirits and so stuns the eyes that even the clearest object fades from sight, so glorious living light encompassed me. Then a great flash of understanding struck my mind and suddenly his wish was granted. turning, I felt my will and my desire impelled by the love that moves the sun and the other stars. Strivings of mortality. How useless are those reasonings of yours that make you bat your wings in downward flight. Some planning theft, others affairs of state, some tangled in the pleasures of the flesh, some merely giving up to indolence. And I, relieved of all such vanities, was there with Beatrice. And you, whose mortal weight must bring you back to earth, tell what you saw down there. Do not hide what I hide not from you. I saw all of heaven's ether glow with rising snowflakes of triumphant souls of all those who had sojourned with us there. My eyes followed their shapes up into space and I kept watching them until the height was too much for my eyes to penetrate. The angelic nature goes so far beyond the scale of mortal numbers that there is no word or concept that can reach that far. This heaven exists in no place but in the mind of God.
On this point depend all nature and all of the heavens. By circling light and love, it is contained as it contains the rest, and only he who bound them comprehends how they were bound. Was lief nun 